Ever since I was a little kid, I've had a real thing about aquariums. I can happily spend hours with my nose pressed up against the glass watching fish swim around. And when I told people that I was coming to Osaka, they said, you've got to go to the Ring of Fire Aquarium. It's called the Ring of Fire because it draws its exhibits from all over the Pacific Basin, which is still bounded by a ring of active volcanoes. It's a terrific name, and it must be a pretty good aquarium because since they opened in 1990, almost 20 million people have gone through the gates. That's more than the entire population of Australia. So there's obviously something worth looking at in here. I I hear there's everything from barramundi to bonefish, tuna, sharks of all kinds, big stingrays, and there's also something very big and very spectacular that you won't see anywhere else. But I'm going to keep that a secret for a while. Come inside and let's have a look at the Ring of Fire Aquarium. To view the various displays of the Ring of Fire or Kai Yukan Aquarium, it's necessary to take a lift or climb stairs to the top of this huge building. Here you enter a whole new world through a fantastic recreation of pine forests and subterranean caverns, complete with their various native inhabitants. After entering the building, a spiral walkway takes you downwards into the bowels of the aquarium itself, past a series of tanks representing different environments from the edge of the vast Pacific Rim. right around the Pacific Basin. This, for example, is an Amazon rainforest environment recreated here in this tank. And there are species of fish in here that you wouldn't see anywhere else outside the Amazon River. Of particular interest to me as a fisherman are the giant Arapama and their smaller cousins, the Arawana. Now, Australian fishermen will probably notice an uncanny resemblance to the Saratoga, a popular Australian species, and there's a good reason for that. These fish are closely related, but they're a lot bigger. The Arapama grows to six or seven feet in length and can weigh 600 pounds, and it'll eat small monkeys if they fall out of the trees into the Amazon River. These ones aren't quite that big, but they're pretty hefty fish. I've always wanted to see one of these in the flesh, and here they are. These smaller tanks, with their individual regional habitats, encircle the nine metre deep main tank. Each one represents a particular environment, ranging from the Antarctic with its penguins to a fantastic recreation of a deep drop off from our very own Great Barrier Reef. The massive main tank holds an incredible 5,400 tonnes of filtered seawater, which is maintained at a constant temperature of 23 degrees Celsius. It represents the central basin of the Pacific Ocean itself, and it's home to an incredible cross-section of life from that rich sea, including pelagic and demersal species that I've never seen in captivity before. at the Ring of Fire Aquarium is this guy, a whale shark. And this is the only place in the world where you'll see a whale shark in captivity. These things are the biggest fish on earth and to be able to keep one in a tank is quite an achievement. As an aquarium junkie, this is about the ultimate buzz. The whale shark is fed every day with scoops of tiny krill, a shrimp-like creature which forms a vital part of the Pacific's intricate food chain. Deeper down in the main tank, there are all sorts of fascinating fish, including whaler sharks, rainbow runners, bonito, mackerel tuna, trevally of many different types, groper, and even a couple of big bonefish, which really got my casting arm quivering. kelp forests of California to the jungle rivers of South America, our own Great Barrier Reef and these fantastic sardine schools from Chile. It's all here. They've managed to capture the aquatic environments from a vast range of areas right around the world in one building. I tell you what, if you ever come to Osaka in Japan, you'd be crazy to miss the Ring of Fire Aquarium.